In this video, we got something really special planned for you guys. This is the 55834MB from Klein Tools, but we're not done there. On this bench, we got some of the most popular tool brands, hand tools, tool bags, and we're gonna be comparing this brand new Klein tool bag, which has a very similar design to one of Klein's original tool bags that everybody knows and loves so much. But the new one has a couple of features this one doesn't have, and we're gonna show you. Also be loading out some Prolock. Also got a master electrician tool pouch from Prolock. We're gonna show you a Vita loadout. Also got some new tools for you guys. And we picked up something special. So stick around, it's all happening right now. Now we're gonna be loading these up for trim out and running pipe. We're gonna have the bare essentials that I think you guys are gonna love. We're also gonna be talking about the tool pouches as we load them up and tell you the pros and cons of each one, starting with this Klein Tools. You'll see it's a minimalist design and it's exactly that. It's too minimal, it doesn't hold enough, and it's not worth the money for how little you're getting here. I do not recommend this one. You can see it's got the pass-through design. A lot of the new clients have that. It's a good and bad thing. And this pouch too, it also protrudes through. Even this loop is slightly larger than your standard Klein loops that they're known for. Fit a pair of Klein's strippers and the bare essentials in this, but I don't recommend this tool pouch. At $20, you're better off getting this Klein tool pouch. Insulated multi from Klein. I've got three different sizes of bits for it, and they're really easy to switch out. They lock in very efficiently. You twist, it pops up, and you're ready to flip it around. If you damage the tips, you don't have to buy a whole new screwdriver. You can always have newer tips ready to go. You have one screwdriver and multiple bits instead of multiple screwdrivers. You've got trim, number one Phillips. you got your number one and your number two Robertson, known for their abuse and longevity. This one comes highly recommended and is a must in my tool bag. If we're going to try and load this in our tough belt tool pouch that everybody knows and loves so much, you can see it really only fits in the knife pouch and it's kind of loose in your actual screwdriver slot. These are gonna be for your standard hand tools like pliers. With this loadout, you wind up putting it here. This is a great tool pouch, it's very rigid. There's so much better out now that's available than this tool pouch. Everyone's still gonna like it, but there is better out there. Prolock, you can fit multiple screwdrivers here. You can fit multiple pliers. You got spots for your bits and you can retrieve things in here with two fingers. This is definitely gonna be better than your tough belt. Kind of hard to find. If you got any questions about any of these tool pouches or tools, leave it in the comments below. I'll get back to you. I've got multiple videos on all this stuff. So as we continue our loadout journey, we're gonna be trying these in different tool pouches if you haven't figured that out yet. Now this is a very different pouch from Tough Belt. Oh, sorry. This is a very different pouch from Lock Supply. It's also the Pro Lock series. Lock Supply is the supply house and they had Pro Lock make these pouches just for them. One thing that's gonna come into play is a feature that the client has. Do you see how these are going above this? This is gonna push all this against your body and ultimately Ultimately, it's not gonna be as comfortable and you've got wasted space back there. So I think we're done with these. Uh, while they are fun and they are minimalistic, they just don't hold enough to be practical. We're gonna put these away for now, but they are available. We're gonna bring in one of my favorites, which is the Volt Claw. This can manipulate wire and grab. The other day I did a live, I was able to grab the wire that I needed and do it safely in a hot panel. And this is just one of those tools that I've gotta have, especially when I'm doing trim out, troubleshooting, something like that. This is very, very good. Everyone's used the back of their clients to shove a GSCI into a box. Uh, no more, this is so good. You're missing out if you don't have a Volt Claw. It's so small it pretty much fits in any pouch and it is an essential tool as far as I'm concerned. Let's talk about wire strippers and many different types of wire strippers. These are some of my favorites. These are really, really simple. They're down to 50 bucks on Amazon right now and they just strip the wire very efficiently. You get the Klein Comfort Curves. You got the newer ones from Milwaukee that are 1000 volt rated. These are gotta be my favorite though. I underestimated these when I first started this channel. Uh, we had six in ones. These are the six. We had the seven in ones. These are the six in ones, and they are fantastic. I, the sizes are app spot on. They strip. They don't grab the wire and pull it. They strip all the insulation clean off, and they work every time. They strip just as good as the Knipex. What's good about the Knipex is that they shear really, really nicely. Unlike any of the pliers, I just don't feel like they open wide enough. These are not an essential tool for me. If you're working with Wagos and not wire nuts, and you're not making up joints, and you feel the need to treat these kind of like a, a lawn and garden tool to do whatever you got to do because they just don't open up very much so you're always kind of fighting that 
then that's your prerogative. But these are just not my, they strip, they manipulate wire, they shear screws, and they cut among some of the best that you've ever seen. But they're too much of a multiplier and not very good for just strip. These are Crocs. These are pretty interesting. These strip whether you've got solid or stranded. It doesn't matter. There is no specific side for solid or stranded. It just strip no matter which way you're facing them. If you're not familiar with that, a lot of your strippers will have some for stranded and a different size for solid. So these go up to the eight solid and 10 stranded. These just go up to eight period. And there's no guessing which side you're at. It's easy to get used to these. They're small. They flare out so you can catch them with your pinky just a little bit easier. If we were gonna talk just strippers, I would say these. But because these replace needle nose pliers and they absolutely do, and they're forged and they kind of got a sheer design and they cut the screws and they strip, these are my go-to. And they're skinny so they fit just about any. Which is what makes these the essential tool. So we told you we were featuring this mod box pouch, the 55A34MB, and we're gonna do just that. And go ahead and get this open. Push this button here to release the back. Slide the clip off, because this is always gonna be on your hip. And there's our tool pouch there. You're gonna notice something special about this tool pouch. It's got a full material pocket back here, unlike the original OG Klein tool bag. Unlike the original OG Klein tool bag. Unlike the original OG Klein tool bag that has two separate pockets here that doesn't connect, the newer one from Klein has like a full almost material pocket here. And actually I think that's pretty cool because now this can be almost like a minimalist pouch with maximum storage. And we're gonna look into that. So if we're to start loading these up, typically your strippers go in the front here and it might take some training to get these in here, see how they're gonna fit. Now, one thing we don't do on this channel, this isn't a stab at any other channels. Okay, maybe it is, it's kind of cheese. When I see somebody stick the handle of their clients into the loop, $200 tool bag, this, and then go tell you to buy that tool bag, that's what you would call being a douchebag. And we're not gonna do that because why would you spend $200 on a tool bag that's simply not big enough to carry everything you need? When I need a tool, I grab it by the back of the handle and I'm ready to use the tool and then I put it back. I'm not doing this number here with another pair of hands and trying to do whatever I gotta do. Not so, you know, sure you can do that, but when I wanna grab a tool, you grab it by the back, you grab it and you're ready to use your tool. So at any point, if we run out of space or we can't fit the tools we need to, then this bag is essentially dead and we're gonna let you know the second that happens. So I'm gonna let you know right now, I'm already having a little bit of trouble trying to figure out where these are gonna fit. It looks like the side pockets are actually a little bit smaller than the middle pocket, and that is not off to a good start. Now Klein is known for kind of training their pocket sizes with the tools that you have, so this might be trainable, but I just realized I can fit this in the front pocket very easily, so we're gonna keep it moving and see what other interesting features we're gonna run in, because they're features right now, they're not calm yet. We need to be able to get some channel locks in here at some point. There's no point in talking to you about how great these are. Everybody knows these are great. These are the absolute best. You cannot get better than Knipex. You just can't do it. They don't slip. You can beat on them. You can abuse them. And they're going to last you until they get stolen. Or you just want a new pair. Like, honestly, you can't break them. I've tried. So... They fit right there. I kind of like that for running pipe. Of course, we could stick them here, and this is where this feature comes into play because this bump out keeps these tools off of your body, whereas this tends to push it into you. See the difference? So we got our Knipex there. We got our strippers. Let's go ahead and get our Klein. That fits very nicely right there. I'm curious about these side pouches, if they're any bigger. A lot of times, you're going to see somebody hang channel locks here. That's fine. If you've got a kind of multi-purpose tool bag and you just want to have some channel locks or something on your person, that's fine to hang them here. And then you kind of got like a full loadout. What's unacceptable is to treat this like this is where these are going to sit the whole time and you're going to pull them out of this loop and start doing work. So if we're going to carry the bare essentials, that's cool here. We're going to load this for pipe and make sure that we can fit what we need to while we're actually doing work. Now I like the Milwaukee Fastback. It's never failed me. This one has blade storage. You gotta get a knife with blade storage. That's when accidents happen is when you have dull blades. This one's got a magnet built in so it holds the blades for you. And yeah, tried and true Milwaukee Fastback. Realistically, this would probably be on your jean pocket, but we're gonna try to put it somewhere. 
It slides nicely right there, so we're gonna leave it right there. Now these where the diagonal cutters come into play. I prefer the angled ones because they kind of give you an automatic fulcrum to be prying things. These are just the straight ones. I sold my angled ones to somebody. So we've got these for now and they just fit in there like that. So we made sure our volt claw would fit and it does. What might be cool is if we could get our drill or impact in here and it looks like we can. And this is starting to look like a really nice paddle. We're going to go ahead and take care of our clients. I want to try the thousand volt ones to see if they fit. But this is what I'm going to be using, especially if I'm doing rough. And they fit nicely too. This hollow nut driver is quickly becoming a must. I pulled the extra bits out. What we're left with is a half inch, a 9 16 and a 7 16 and it's all hollow. And those three sizes will run any type of straps or any amount of conduit that you want to run plus you're ready to set racks with all thread this is like a must tool for me now the big question is can i get it to fit here and i think with some persuasion i think we can and that's going to make me really happy i'm going to have to report back whether or not this fits because like i said before a client is known for me able to train sizes of their pouch and i'm thinking that this is going to fit i might do it here on it fits and that is a huge flare out. I'm very impressed with this tool pouch, just the fact that that was able to get in there. We go ahead and put our extra bit right here. We could probably even put them in the same slot as the screwdriver, so I think we'll do that. Very nice. This is a fuel surge. Sorry for to tell you about it. I was too excited to put it in this tool belt. It's a great impact. It's very quiet. It's hydraulic. Uh, it's, it's just really, really good. Got separate videos on all this stuff. We're gonna need a spot to put pencils, so we may as well put the pencil in there right now while we're thinking about it. One of my favorites now, because it has all this bit storage, this spins in your hand. The other day I was opening up a panel and I was kind of crammed against the wall and I was able to hold this against the panel and just spin this with the palm of my hand and let this portion spin just like this. This extends out, acts like a great bit holder for your drivers. It extends all the way out. When you pop this off, it turns into a regular screwdriver because you're able to put whatever bit you want into this portion. And then one of the best features that no one really talks about is that this is cleanable. So you can clean off the magnet and keep it moving. This is the 13 to one HVAC and it's an essential tool. I like that you can extend this out and get better retention depending on your loadout. We're gonna pop it in right there, but I am curious, can we fit it in this slot right here? Ha. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> we can, that's awesome. Now we got another tool here. This is my beater and reamer combo. Keystone tip, so it's made for abuse. You can beat the crap out of this with no worries. Very good screwdriver. If you're gonna try to do this setup, you make sure you get a flat shank. That way this set screw has somewhere to sit on. Really, really good option. And it fits right there. This is a multi-ratchet and yes, it ratchets. And it's got your bit holders. And honestly, it's just a really, really nice tool. Do we really need this when we have this one? Not really, but I like it, so we're gonna carry it. We got two of them now. We got another slot right here. I think a level is gonna fit in here, and this is looking really sweet right now. This may be better than the $100 Vito. Gotta get this level to fit in here. Nice, it's gonna train nicely. And look, I could probably pull the whole tool pouch up with it, just about. That's a really good fit. It's not going to wiggle anywhere. Everything in here is fit really nicely. We still got to work on these clients a little bit, but they're naturally heavy. I would love to get this portion around here. We're going to work on that here in a minute. Now, there's two things we're missing would be a tape holder and a tape holder. We need a measuring tape and we need black electrical tape. So let's go ahead and get our tape on our tape loop. We need to be able to put our tape measure somewhere. I think it's gonna sit right here. Probably not here. We can try it out. Let's see what our options are. We're gonna go ahead with the Lufkin Night Eye from Crescent. It does fit there. It's a little bit bulky. I think we might need to switch these around. That actually fits a little bit better. Let's try it over here. That fits even better. I think we're going to leave it here for now and see what you guys think. 
Now, keep in mind, these are probably still my favorite. They work really well as a hammer. They strip really nicely. They cut, they crimp, they shear, they make up joints. Uh, you almost don't need clines when you have these. And they're gonna fit that much better as well. Pouch, and for bare minimum essentials, they work really nicely because now we have a crimper. This is one of those tools where when you need it, you need it. It's a stubby. I don't recommend this one. I think the bit storage is too small. We cannot physically pull this out anymore. It's kind of hard to get the bit. Uh, and then it turns into not a stubby. Like why would you need a stubby to not be a stubby? I think the flip stubby is actually better. This is not that great. It's just not. You lose out on your handle grip. This is gonna spin. A stubby needs to be able to give us more grab and I do not recommend this tool. One really nice thing about this tool pouch is it does offer bit storage. The other Klein tool pouches do not have bit storage. They don't have pockets. They have pass-through pockets on all of them. So that's why we had to have this one previously because this was our bit. But this one has closed pockets, so we can probably fit this just about anywhere. If we had a couple of pockets, this is where our pencil is, so we can definitely fit some bits here for extra storage. Before we get too far, I do want to see what these look like in there. These are very large thousand volt plier i think we could probably train it in there we've almost got this around there if i push this up you can see where it wants to go maybe we'll do it on a live maybe not but they are secure and while we're talking about the thousand volt rated milwaukee's if you haven't seen these you should check them out because they are nice look at the small the head is right there they did a really good job because diagonal cutters are for precision especially for insulated diagonal cutters and i just appreciate the design of these the curve the thinness just everything about them i'm actually really liking the these diagonals. Just in case somebody doesn't like the Milwaukee's, we'll go ahead and throw the Knipex in there. They are nice, they're just not my favorite. Now, this is something we've talked to you guys for the last three years about. And what's great about this is it's half inch, it's 7 sixteenths, it's 3 8 and it's 5 sixteenths all in one. So this is your stretch straps all the way up to inch and a quarter. This is your stretch straps after inch and a quarter. And then 7 sixteenths is all your quarter inch hardware like Minerlac straps and things like that. This acts like a socket because it protrudes off of the flat on this. And it's going to work really good for minis. Like really, really good. I'm curious if Klein is worth it. There's no other way to put it. Is this worth it? Let's find out. See how easy we can get our razor knife? Yeah, everything grabs out of here very easily. I'm liking the look of these new Klein. The black is really... So we got the same protrusion. I like, I actually like the etching on there and the numbers gives you a little bit more grip. It's got more of a raised profile to it and it's skinny where it needs to be. It's actually very thin, very different. I like the flip nice and nice and tight there. It ratchets. This was my hope. My hope was that the three eighths would be sticking out just a little bit more, but you can see it doesn't. These are 40 bucks. Uh, I think this is $30 for both of these. Uh, three quarter for your half inch hardware, nine sixteenths for your three eighths hardware, five eighths for your beam clamps. If you've got a larger three eighths beam clamp or half inch beam clamp, they're gonna use a five eighths and they're gonna use a multi-point socket. So this will get on your beam clamp. So squares and it'll tighten them. These are like must tools for electricians. I'm so glad Klein decided to start making these. They are the leader when it comes to electrical hand tools. And I'm glad to see that they pulled their head out of their butt and started doing what electricians need, which is these. It only took them since 2008 to make one of them. I've, I've been using this ever since I started the trade almost. We can actually fit them both here where the razor knife used to be. And the razor knife can clip on just about anywhere, honestly. We can even... We can even slide it down there just like that. Well, that's the loadout. Hopefully we didn't miss anything. Yeah, it's fairly heavy, but it's going to be on a tool pouch or it can be on your hip. You don't have to carry all this, but damn, it carries it all. And it's half the price as a veto. So in our quest to find out if Klein is a better value than the veto, this is the closest thing yet. Almost all that stuff can fit in here. I already know it doesn't if you don't believe me. In case you want to know, you know, you would put your Klein's here, you put those there. 
You could hold these here or you could loop them. Your tape measure goes there. Beating screwdriver goes right there. Your volt claw goes back here. Depending on what you're doing, your insulated multi might have to go for a hike, but this is gonna do everything you need it to. You just don't get your added protection, but this does have all the sizes you would need. Your conduit screwdriver, I'm calling it a conduit screwdriver. It's a pass-through nut driver. It goes there. Razor knife crams in there quite nicely, actually. Believe it or not, you can fit the level right here. You still got room for a prox sensor, which we forgot to put in here, but we still have three other open loops here, plus all the storage inside of this pouch. If we wanted to, we could cram this insulated multi screwdriver here, and that's going to be a full heavy $100 Vito bag with the protrusion, the pass through. This, this is fantastic. You can actually get two channel locks right there. Very, very nice tool bag. $100 though. At $40, it's not even close. You can fit way more than this. This is got a material spot right here. You can put your MC connectors, your Red Devils, your couplings, whatever you're doing. We just loaded this out with all the bare essentials, not just for running conduit, but also for trim out in the same pouch. Of course, you're not gonna be doing both at the same time. Since you guys stuck around, I'm gonna show you the Master Electrician Tool Pouch from Prolock. It's very similar to the Tough Built, and yes, it does have a kickstand, and it's got a hidden spot here for a number book. If you're not putting your tools on your customer's work surfaces, and you're really gonna wind up kind of just stacking all the tools in here. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below about this Klein tool bag. My favorite part about it is this bump out here that keeps the tools off your body. The fact that you can put an impact or a drill in here, even the multimeter if you chose to do so, or material. And again, we still had a couple of empty slots here. And not only that, you can be carrying all these tools at the same time, but the fact that you can is pretty darn cool. We'll see you guys in the next one. And I should add, if you're a construction electrician, you're gonna wind up with this tool pouch anyway. You get the thicker belt, you get the material, and it just makes more sense to get a fully loaded out tool belt. I recommend the Gatorback or this Klein Tools. This is considerably cheaper and easier to find. But you can see the difference here. We don't get our impact drill slot and we actually wound up with a little bit less room. So this is a huge upgrade compared to the original. And yeah, that's, that's my thought on that.